Hello and a welcome to Sopot for this afternoon's Longines FEI Jumping Grand Prix, the CSIO five star here in the Hippodrome Sopot. The Equestrian Centre, the most modern facility of this kind in Poland, exclusively in the country, has four indoor arenas with a total training area of nearly 7,000 square metres at its disposable at its disposal. And uh, the start list, where we have 13 nations representative, represented here, Poland with uh, 10, Russia, just the one rider, the Czech Republic with uh, two, France, five riders, Norway with two, Italy, five, Japan, just uh, one rider from Japan, Germany with five riders, Great Britain with two riders here in the Grand Prix, Sweden, five. Spain with uh, three, United States of America with three riders, and finally Belgium with uh, five riders as well. Total of 50 combinations coming forward to jump this afternoon's Grand Prix here, set by the course designer Olaf Peterson from uh, Germany. And a long way to go. Anna Power there, 19th out for Great Britain. And then Jamie Gornall with uh, Carsten. He'll be 23rd. Frederick uh, Jonsson, Coldplay for Sweden, 24th on that start list for the first round. Two rounds here on the, in the Grand Prix, and we're looking forward to a really exciting afternoon. Really is a beautiful setting. The crowds are starting to fill the uh, stands quite uh, quite vigorously. The left-hand side of your screen, that's uh, pretty much full up now underneath the secretariats and the VIP area also full on the right-hand side of your screens. Well, the secret ingredient of Sopot success lies in the flawless combination of its historical, artistic and architectural heritage with the irresistible beauty of its natural surroundings and hospitality. All these elements contribute to the unique character of this seaside resort from the turn of the 19th and 20th century. Well, wherever you're watching all around the world, we hope you enjoy this afternoon's Longines FEI Jumping Grand Prix here in Poland. Sopot, of course, the host of the fourth leg of the European Division 1. Halfway marks uh, the eight legs that are made up for the Nations Cup, the Longines FEI Jumping Nations Cup of Poland here, and that all unravels on Sunday afternoon. Well, just a few moments away from the first horse out on course. A little bit overclouded now here. We've had uh, brilliant sunshine all morning, but uh, now a little bit overcast. So perfect jumping conditions here in the uh, Hippodrome Sopot Equestrian Centre. There is uh, 13 numbered fences. The number of really difficult turning lines that uh, Olaf Peterson has set these riders for the Grand Prix. Maximum height, 1 metre 60, with uh, 13 fences, 16 jumping efforts in total, with a time allowed at the moment of 60 seconds. So the course is set, and uh, we'll be having our first rider in the uh, Hippodrome here in uh, Sopot for the Grand Prix two rounds, as I mentioned earlier and uh, 13 nations represented, 50 riders in total. Well, let's have a look around the course. They start off over the Longines upright and then a swinging uh, left-handed turn on eight or nine strides, depending whether they take the inner or outer line, and then a turn back. They come to the big oxer at three, and then that preceded by a very, very tight line to the water jump at fence four. Moving away on six strides, they come to the first combination, fence 5A and 5B, just at one stride, right in the middle at the top end of the arena, and then turn back to an oxer at six. And then a really funny line, coming back to the oxer at seven, off this right-handed curve, really sets the riders up as they jump towards the crowds, and then turn left-handed to the big oxer, and then Finally, coming around from fence eight to the really big ascending spread at nine, that uh, triple bar, 
and then on the six strides, seven quite short strides, condensed strides to the Oxa at 10 before the upright at 11. And then they turn back down this final line, the Longines treble, 12A, B and C, Oxa in one stride and then one stride, two strides then to the Oxa at 12C on the exit and then six strides down to the final fence. The Longines upright sees them home. 60 seconds, the time allows, as I, as I mentioned, course designer Olaf Peterson Jr., who set this course, really has put his uh, stamp and uh, mark of authority out there in this 13-number fence course. The crowds really starting to build for the enjoyment this afternoon here in the uh, Hippodrome Sopot. The Equestrian Centre seen many, uh, many tales over the years. The team here done a really good job. The ground here been watered, harrowed, rolled, and uh, it is set. So the uh, first to go will be Radoslav uh, Zalewski for Poland, for the home nation, riding uh, Latina of the 50 that we have on that start list. So the flags really just uh, flickering in the light breeze that we've got here in Sopot for this afternoon's Longines FBI Jumping Grand Prix. Radoslav Zalewski will be the first to jump. Just uh, final preparations being made. Just a couple of riders just out there still having a walk around this course, checking the distances between fences. It's great to see so many people turning out on a Friday afternoon for this uh, spectacle here in the Hippodrome. Really enjoying their jumping and they really do come to watch the heroes and heroines of uh, this century. A couple of riders to note that come later on. Margie Goldson Engel, one of the uh, leading lady riders, third last to jump. Kevin Stouts, Peter DeVos, Olivia Philippartz. Amongst those uh, last few to go, Jessica Springsteen will be in the second half. We have a break midway just for a few moments while they come in and just give a bit of attention to the ground here. Just a quick harrow around the arena. As I mentioned, two riders from Great Britain, just two, Anna Parr and Jamie Gornall. They will come towards the end of that first group. One rider from Japan is uh, Terahiro Hayashi, riding Karana's M&M, based uh, with uh, Ludger Berbham. It is that so the first to go in the Longines FEI Jumping Grand Prix, Radoslav Zalewski and uh, Ilatina. So combination that uh, have been going very well. Unique uh, technique and style which he measures steps between the fences. What, walking the course with him just a few moments ago, he tries to emphasize every step. That way he says he's not mistaken for uh, counting the distance represented at Poland at the World Equestrian Games in Car in Normandy back in 2014, riding uh, Duke of uh, Carnival. Finished way down the order and in the team competition. It's a 10-year-old mare by Nabeb de Rev, owned by Jakob uh, Kuzma. So this is Bay, first to go for Poland. So starts off over the Longines Oxa, and then down to this little innocuous fence in the middle of the arena. Many thought that that would go, 
That is a first uh, pole on the floor for uh, Radislav. Lovely big jump at the water. Then just her holding line back to this double. There's just two uprights, the Lotto uprights at 5A and B. What unusual to have a double combination coming after a water. This is the Porsche Oxer. Seems to be putting those uh, early mistakes, well, say that, early mistake behind them, but it is two fences down now, a total of eight. Big jump at the ascending spread down to the water tray at 10. I don't think the time that we were given was correct. 60 seconds we have on our sheet at the Longines treble. 12AB and C just hangs in the air, has another rail, back rail goes and jumps the last. So uh, picks up a time penalty as well. 12 jumping, 13 is the total 12 jumping and one time. So the time allowed 83 seconds around uh, this course. So that's the first of the 50 to jump in this Longines FEI jumping Grand Prix here in Sopot, Poland. There was the first of the rails that hit the floor. Unfortunate uh, four penalties for each of those 12 jumping and one time. Well, now it is uh, another rider. This is for Russia now. Lovely grey by Douglas, Dutch bread. Vladimir Berletsky with uh, Daddy Cool. And by Sergei Maslov. First rider for Russia. Both of uh, Vladimir's parents, very active riders. Mother dressage, father also show jumper. So it seemed pretty much a natural progression for uh, Vladimir to take up riding in early life. Had some pretty good form in the past, competing at uh, World Cup level. One of those in Aachen. Real memorable moment for Vladimir. So clear coming to this triple rail. Opting for the seven strides down there. Just takes that out in front though. Was a bit of a worry coming down there. Walked it a few times, and whether the riders were going to go on six or seven. So coming towards home at the Longines treble combination, 12A, B, C. No problems there. Just the last to jump on the forward six strides down to the last, but uh, picks up another one to pick up a time for the uh, time. Pretty influential already with two riders gone. Total of five. So four jumping, one time for Vladimir Beletsky and uh, Daddy Cool. This is that rail that went, just uh, tips it in front, get overly high over that Oxa at 10. Well, now we turn to the uh, Czech Republic. Another grey 14-year-old stallion by Sento Lano. So, uh, Centolano So, Andre Zvara, Centolano next to go for the Czech Republic. And the combination that competed at the World Equestrian Games back in uh, 2014. Competed at a couple of championships as well last year at uh, Gothenburg and uh, two years before at Aachen.
gets high in the air over the rustic oxer at three. It's quite close to the water. I think they did have a toe in and then just lose a bit of confidence going to the lotto double at 5A and 5B. So a toe in the water and then both rails go at the fifth. Just as he came to the water, you saw him as he just did a little bit of a dodge coming to five. And I think the hand's going to go up and uh, will retire. Yep. Well, that a real shame for Andrei Zvara and Sento Lano. That uh, is a retirement. to see him as he comes down there, just a really hesitant off the floor. So we've had one from Czechoslovak, from the Czech Republic. Now another rider for the Czech Republic, Zuzana Zelenkova, and she rides uh, Kaleri the second, 15-year-old stallion. by Kalido the first, this lovely bay, rides for a jumping team for pleasure, had some really good results, former junior young rider, that rail goes at two again, that is a uh, going to be one of the bugbears I think for these riders it is innocuous but it's a funny line from one to two and just uh, draws them in quite close rides hard to the water no problems there and gets him back well for the double at five So still just that one fence down for Zizana. Riding hard, he's not giving her the easiest of times out there, but he is still answering her when she presses the button. Kick out at the upright, now turning back then towards home. Treble 12A, B and C. A lovely way of jumping. Just gets a little bit uh, long over a little few of the fences, but she's uh, another one just to pick up a time fault. So four jumping and one time for Dizana Zelenkova and Kaleri the second. That's two riders on five. And uh, one rider on 13. That's the first to go, Radoslav Zalewski. Three fences down and one time penalty for him. So we go back to Poland. Poland with uh, 10 riders. It's Maximilian Vector, London. London by Landstreicher, 16-year-old stallion. So Maximilian Vector started his adventure with equestrianism very early on at the age of nine. And again early on in his career made his professional debut on a very good little great pony called Aviva and quickly then switched to uh, riding the horses gained momentum fairly quickly went on to Germany where he trained under the supervision of uh, Christian Hess went on to win a bronze medal at the Polish Senior Championships back in 2015. Won a gold medal at the Polish Championships Young Riders back in 2013 as well. Hugely experienced. But I think I uh, put a toe in the water there. Yep, just watching uh, out. And they're just uh, putting the tape back in place. So that's an annoying toe in the water for London.
Well, show is a huge interest in uh, football as well. Chatting to him earlier, we're well uh, pleased that the World Cup is underway. They're just carrying four penalties. In fact, they're eight now. Coming back down this final line. Time's going to be very tight as well. He's going to pick up a time penalty in and out of the treble. Just the last then. So a total of eight jumping one time, 86.47. Eight jumping one time, total of nine for Maximilian Werchter and London. A bit disappointed with that because they've been jumping really well of uh, late. So we stay with Poland in the Grand Prix. Michael Kazmajczak and uh, Kupasa by uh, quite easy 12-year-old stallion at the road at the final in Gothenburg back in uh, 2016. Finished uh, just outside the top 20 there. Also rode at the uh, final last year in Sweden in Gothenburg. The Kupasa, 12 years old, Dutch bred by Quite Easy the first. Coming down to this little upright at two, jumps that well. It's on a bit of an angle to these riders. So this is number six of the 50. Takes it nice and steady to the water. And I think he put a toe in the water. Yep, that confirmed. When we walked that line from three to four, it was eight forward or nine short and a number of the riders were a little bit undecided whether they were going to go on the eight or the nine majority thought that the eight made sense but then you've got a double of uprights coming out of uh, after the water so it's a difficult decision to make because there's not much time from four to five only six strides to get the horses back and listening before that double on the whole he's jumped very well around this course a little bit of a fight going to the upright at 11 now turning towards the last four fences the Longines treble 12 ABC and it jumps the last another one to pick up two time penalties so it's uh, four jumping and uh, two time total of six for Michael uh, Kazmajak and Kupasa this is the toe in the water nice and steady but I mean obviously from that angle we didn't get that angle on our screens for the first round but you know that is the risk that you take and it's a, a real uh, difficult decision for these uh, riders well staying with Poland it's a Jan Bobek now with uh, Chaco Emakor Chaco Emakor by Chaco Blue nine-year-old uh, Chestnut Stallion real test of uh, horsemanship for Jan Chaco uh, Emakor in uh, the Grand Prix nine years old So starting out then with the nine-year-old Chaco McCaw, lovely jump at the second, just stayed in balance, rode the turn, difficult turn around to three as well, this real uh, turn back onto the water, He's decided to go, watch that again, beautifully done and lands and just checks quite uh, short distance in the double at five as well one stride in between those two uprights 
Always easy, easiest in the mouth, in the hand, as he comes, uh, just asks the horse to come back. He's just always trying to fight him. Doesn't make Jan's job overly easy. clear all the way so far it's a little bit low over 11 and upright now comes back down the final line Longine treble Oxer in upright in the middle Oxer two strides out just the last to jump he's gonna pick up a time fault this is a real shame because this is the one he has the last as well so it's four jumping and one time total of five that is the equal lead at the moment with uh, Zuzana Zelenkova and Vladimir Bletsky. They both uh, had one fence down and one time penalty. So they are our current leaders at the moment on the five. I'm sure we'll see the clear rounds coming. We've uh, now had seven riders out of the 50 that are coming forward for this Longines FEI Jumping Grand Prix here in Poland, Sopot. That was a real shame to have the last fence down. Well, now we move on to uh, France. So the first rider for France is Mathieu Billot and uh, Elena S. Elena S, 10-year-old mare by Verdi. 33 years old now. Seventh in the team at the European Championships last year. Had some really good Grand Prix runs. Eighth in uh, Villamora earlier on in the year. Ooh! Well, that was a shame. Never really going to get there. I think he was a little bit undecided on what stride he was going to go on. Eight or nine made a definite decision a little bit too late jumps and lands in the water Just got a bit spooky with the trays and the uh, open water. Ten years old. Middle part of the treble goes eight. Time looks okay. This is the first one we've seen with uh, no time penalties, but paying the penalty for uh, that round eight jumping for uh, Matthew Billow and uh, Elena S. So three riders on five, one on six, Matthew on eight, Maximilian Vector on nine, and then uh, Radoslav Zaveski first to go on 13. That is the uh, scores so far on the boards. Well now uh, Poland, Kamil uh, Gzelczyk, with uh, Vibaro by Baju de Rue, 11 year old Grey Gelding. Well, they contested the Grand Prix just. Uh, a few days ago at uh, Penavola, and then here to Sopot. Oh, well, that was a little bit dirty. He went to come down on that forward stride. So that is four penalties for uh, Camel already. Look overly keen on coming back to the water. 
If he does it again, it's elimination, and that is elimination, unfortunately, for two refusals. Kamal uh, Zhalcek and uh, Vibaro taking real exception to the water. What a real shame. He's going to come back for a third attempt. Been given permission to do so, but again saying no. And uh, unfortunately, uh, that is a real disappointment for the uh, home nation. Well, now the uh, turn for Norway. It is uh, Martin Meyer Dingelands with uh, Douglas Hill, owned by Hannah Meyer Dingelands and uh, Tori Hanlon, by Ard Vidya Douglas, 12 year old Bay Gelding. They're still awaiting our first clear here in the Grand Prix. Co-owner of the Sambi Gardmeter stables in Mara, Norway. Finished second at the 2017 Norway Grand Prix in Linsvolen. Combination aiming for the Olympic Games in 2020 in Tokyo. Of course, with the FEI World Equestrian Games coming up, flag goes up, so that is four penalties at the water. Proving very influential, the water here today. Jumps out over the Lotto upright. So turning around, left-handed to the triple bar at nine. Six strides down to the Oxer, just takes that behind. So adds another four. And gets in very close to the internet fence down at the bottom end of the arena. Bit of readjusting. But jumps in and out of the treble Longine treble well, and she's going to pick up a time fault. Last fence goes as well. 12 jumping penalties and uh, one time. Total of 13 for Martin Meyer Dingelands and uh, Douglas Hill. So we stay with Norway and it's Victoria Gullickson and uh, Deville by uh, Dabo, 10 year old grey mare, owned by the Stroll Gullick. Rider that's been uh, plagued with injuries. She rode on the spring tour in Norway back in 2016 with a broken hand. Suffered uh, had a really bad fall back in 2015 in the September of that year. Head, back and rib injury. She returned to training after a few weeks. She was very quickly back in the saddle. Father, Ger Gillickson, or Jimmy as he's known, was uh, a professional, really, really class jumper for decades and uh, her brother Johann Sebastian also jumping very successfully on the international career on the international circuit toe in the water again for uh, Victoria Gullickson So far, the water has been pretty much the fence on the course that's caused the most trouble. The 
of a fight going down to the uprights at the far end of the arena as she turns back away from the stands down to this line right against the VIP area. The Longines treble jumps in well and gets the one and two strides and clear of the last and it looks like time will be okay 82.45 that score for uh, Victoria Gullickson and Deville goes into the lead at the early stages of course uh, 50 riders we're only at uh, rider number 11 of the 50 here is that picture just as a little bit of a look as he takes off and the front uh, toe goes in Victoria Gullickson and Deville they go to the top at the moment. Well, now for Italy, it is uh, Giulia, Martengo, Marquet, and uh, Princey. Nine year old mayor by Casal. Well, Julia, hugely experienced Italian show jumper. She competed at the uh, big international in Madrid back in 2011. Dreams of becoming a national champion over at least one of her just watching the water, clear of the water. One of her real dreams is to ride at Tokyo. She's got a good team of horses coming up through the grades. Rode back at Hartbury in 2000 in the United Kingdom. Travels all around Europe. But the uh, Oxer goes. That's uh, Porsche Oxer at seven. It's a short seven strides down from the water tray Oxer at 10 to 11. Six from nine to 10, seven from 10 to 11. You've just got to do a bit of adjusting in the middle. Jumps into the Longine treble well. So just that one fence down, goes on the forward stride to the last. Time is 10, one hundredths of a second, just inside the time allowed of 83 seconds, but it is uh, four penalties. For uh, Julia Mar Martinengo, uh, Marquette and Princey. So that's two riders now on the four. She was so, so close to that uh, time allowed of just 83 seconds. Well, now uh, Tadahiro Hayishi and uh, Karana's M&M. Sole rider for Japan. Well, this 11-year-old by Untouchable, he uh, left his home country for uh, Riesenbeck back in 2009 at the age of only 18 and has become a really important part of the Luca Bevan stables. He trains and shows mainly the young horses, bringing them on through to international level. That is what he would love to do, and that's what he is enjoying now. And the first major highlights of this young man's career came back in 2014 when he rode at the World Equestrian Games in Normandy and uh, uh, the team bronze medal at the Asian Games with his former horse Loretto Classic and really shot into prominence in 2014. And in the summer of 2015, he quali qualified together with the Japanese team for the Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro with uh, this horse. But uh, unfortunately, he wasn't nominated for team selection, but I'm sure that is on the cards for this hugely talented young man. So clear so far.
He's used his head incredibly well around this course. Just gets the adjusted stride down to 11. Time looks okay. Maybe a little bit tight. I think he's going to be okay. He's got uh, some 10 seconds now to get home. This could be our first clear. He's just got the last to jump. Sees a forward long stride and he jumps the last. 81.32 and our first clear here. Tadahara Hayashi and the Karana's M&M. That's, so, that's why they were going so well in that Olympic year 2016. Of course, they've got the World Equestrian Games coming up in a few months' time. The FEI uh, World Equestrian Games. What a round for this young Japanese rider. Tadahiro Hayashi and uh, Karana's M&M. Well, now we move uh, back to Italy. And it is Emilio Biocci with the Call Me. Emilio Biocci and uh, Call Me by Contendro the second, 11 year old stallion. Born in Tuscany in the heart of Italy and has represented Italy for many, many years now. Enlisted in the Italian Armed Force. He dedicates his, most of his time to show jumping and training. And uh, with the Italian team, he took part in two World Equestrian Games in Aachen in 2006 and Lexington, Kentucky in 2010. That was uh, both with the French stallion, Capital Dagon. And uh, as a trainer of many young horses, he grows them through the, their careers, bringing them on to the best of their levels. And he really has got a good team of horses at top, top international level now. The wind just picking up here slightly in the Hippodrome Sopos, the equestrian centre. I wonder if we will see a run of clears now. Often the way, once we've had one, we seem to have... Uh, Quite a few more come. Certainly hasn't looked like touching a pole at the moment. Italians with a great selection of riders in the show jumping world as well. Really have started to uh, stamp their mark. Time good. Just needs to jump the last now. Bit of untidy jump at the second at last. And it is clear round number two. We have ourselves a jump off. One for Japan, one for Italy now. Well, that's uh, the quickest round so far 80.72 for Emilio Picocci and uh, Kulmi. Great round, he was absolutely delighted with that. Well, from Italy, we move back to Poland. Rider number 15 of the 50. It is uh, Mishkavoy Kochon with uh, Cedric by Chaco Blue. Apologies for my Polish pronunciation, it is not my forte. Doing, uh, doing my best. I had a word with a couple of the guys in the press office earlier to try and see if we could uh, just uh, improve that, but it's quite difficult language for me to, to learn. Well, Mishkavoy with Cedric, that's an 11-year-old. Poland would love a clear round. But it's not going to be. The rail goes at 5A. So two rails on the floor now. Yeah. 
It's a real fight for the seven, isn't it? Just going down that line from 10 to 11. Could be quite forward from 9 to 10, and then really short from 10 to 11. Front rail goes of the Longines Oxa coming out of the treble. And the last, just for good measures, bang on the time allowed of 83 seconds, but four fences down. It is a total of 16 penalties for uh, Mishkevoy, uh, Kayakon, and uh, Cedric. Two clear rounds on the board so far. One for Japan, one for Italy in this 50-strong class, the Longines FBI Jumping Grand Prix here in Sopot. The CSIO Five Star, incorporating, of course, the Longines FBI Jumping Nations Cup Poland. Well, now to Germany, Mario Stevens with uh, Landano, Landano by Lord uh, Pezzi, nine-year-old Gelding, owned by Mario himself. And in the German city of Bav, just a few days ago, everything was about the German championships for show jumping. And it was this man with the Talisman de, de Mazur who won the ultimate title. Been on the scene for a number of years, represented Germany at the uh, big championships in Gijon back in 2001, ridden at uh, two championships back in late 90s and 99 and in 2000 winning team silver at uh, those a very big jump at that water fence Four, now 5A, 5B, gets a control back. Sees a good line down to the Porsche Oxer at seven. Now this Lotto upright with the little water trays, those round discs of water underneath. So just over halfway now. 25 riders in the first half before the course drag. They harrow the arena. Still clear, Mario Stevens for Germany. A little bit lucky in the treble, but he's just got the last. The time is okay. Stands off the last. And it is. Clear out, number three, for Mario Stevens and Landano. Landano, the third clear. Japan have won, Italy have won, and Germany now have won in the jump off. Well, we go back to Italy, and it is uh, Michael Cristofaletti with uh, Belloni by Ballo de Rue, 11 year old chestnut gelding. For Italy, who already have one rider in that jump off. That's of uh, Emilio Bicocci and Call Me. Michael Cristofaletti will be hoping he can jump a clear round with this 11 year old as well. He was quick down to the double, but very clever, Bologna.
And needs to do a little bit of work here for the seven. He's done the work. Gets in a little bit close, but he's still clear. 20 seconds, 19 now to get home. Four fences left to jump. Will Italy have two in the jump off? This has been a cracking round. Well, just the final fence. Time is okay. Stands off the last and jumps the last. Clear round for Italy. For Michael Cristofaletti and uh, Bologna. They have two in the jump off now. Two for Italy, one for Japan and a one for Germany. Well, what a jump off that's going to make it as we go down into the final few riders before the first of the breaks here in the Longines FEI Jumping Grand Prix in Sopot. It is uh, Andre Oplatek and uh, El Camp by Campari. 15-year-old stallion owned by Andre himself for Poland, competed at uh, European Championships. They were 12th last year in uh, Slovakia at uh, Shamarin with the Copperfields. Copperfield he rode there, competed at Arezzo with uh, El Camp back in 2014. Combination that have been together for many years now. Won a couple of good Grand Prix last year. Won the Grand Prix back in 2015 on the Baltica Tour. Flag stays down at the water. say about that didn't get the stride he wanted and uh, our camp just didn't really help him out as much as maybe he could have done and the back rail goes of the triple bar just not making the distance across these oxes quite as well had to ride quite hard then on the six strides and I think the hand's going to go up and he's going to retire so that's another retirement for Poland Andre Oplatek and El Camp that they will save themselves for another day didn't see it really stood off that Paul Shockster at seven well now we move to Great Britain Great Britain with two riders and they both come in this first half it's Anna Power with Blazer B owned by Anna herself by Tom Bowler 12 years old this gelding British show jumper Anna, real star of the European show jumping circuit now. Since her teen, she's competed internationally, building up a really impressive record of uh, first and leaderboard rankings while representing Great Britain at uh, some of the world's most prestigious events um, in, in Europe. And 2010 saw her real coming of age when she won the coveted Queen Elizabeth II Cup at the Royal International Hall Show and being part of the team that took the Nations Cup victory in Linz for Great Britain. And after the sale of Unique to uh, Tina Fletcher, Anna spent 2011 producing her younger horses and she's quickly filled up Unique's sizable shoes and she really has got a great team of horses. I think that flag may go up. It does indeed. Four penalties for Anna Parr at the water. Well, that's a real shame. I think one of the most notable results I can think of, apart from the Queen Elizabeth II Cup at the Royal International, was also being uh, that uh, top ten place at the King, the five star, the King George V Cup at the Royal International, and uh, also winning Mill Street, the Grand Prix there. Blazer B really now, and as a top horse. Fourth in the 
Mill Street uh, three-star Grand Prix, just eight years of age. Really tip for stardom. And uh, jumps the last. Uh, two fences down inside the time for Anna Power. And Blazer B, 80.41 her time. So we now go back to France. France with uh, now Thierry Rosier and uh, Venezia de Consigne. Uh, Kashmir van Shutashoff, 13 year old uh, mayor, son of Olympic medalist uh, Marcel Rosier and the brother of Philippe, who uh, also an Olympic rider. And Thierry's father, Marcel, who owns the prestigious Espace Rosier, which is uh, in the, the central base of the uh, Marianod team in uh, Bois-le-Soir, Bois-le-Bois, Bois-le-Bois, Sien et Man. They have got an amazing base. Rode that beautifully. Still clear. Just four fences left to jump. Well, Thierry Rosier. Time is going to be a little bit tight. He's going to be okay, though. So, France. Now with another in the jump off. It is a Japan, Italy, Italy, and now France with uh, Thierry Rosier and uh, Venezia. The Cossien, they jump clear in a time of 80. Oh, in fact, they don't. They pick up a time penalty. So that is... Uh, that is a shame. Just looking on uh, the scoreboard, Paolo Paini and Ottava Meravigila de Casa G is uh, next to jump. So we thought his time was okay, but Thierry Rosier has picked up one time penalty according to the official Longines scoreboard. So we'll confirm that in a second. In fact, that now confirmed on the scoreboard. Paolo Paini next to go with this 12-year-old by for pleasure. One of this uh, man's uh, highlights, really winning the team competition at the 2017 Nations Cup at St. Gallen in Switzerland. Earlier this year, back in April, fractured a fibula bone in his legs after he was kicked by a horse. He's back to full fitness, aiming for the FEI World Equestrian Games in Tryon in a few months' time. It really is testament to how much hard work he's put in getting back from that broken leg earlier on in the year in April. of a regular the Casat G clear at the moment 
Italy already with two riders in this jump off. Michael Cristofaletti and also Emilio Bicocci. Can Italy get three in this jump off? Time is good. Just the last to jump. And clears the last. Italy do have three in the jump off. Well, they are on fire. And of course, we have that Nations Cup coming up on Sunday afternoon. Make sure you put that in your uh, diaries. Well, now we go back to Poland. You will have to uh, excuse me this time. It's Wojciech Wojciech, I think. And Nakord Maloney by Nabab Derev, nine-year-old stallion. So for Poland, Poland yet to have one in the jump off. So just about to start their round then. Three in the jump off for Italy, one for Japan and one for Germany. Total of five in this jump off in the first half. We have one for Great Britain left, one for Sweden and one for Germany. And then we have the first break. Beautiful jump out over the water, then gains the control back to the double rode that really well really really well if he gets into the jump off i'm going to do a bit of homework in the break because uh, even though i've written this down phonetically i still am struggling with uh, his name Looks easy, this horse, making it look really easy. Just nine years of age. Poland may have one in the jump off. They are going to go wild if he jumps to last. And they do. The time is good as well. He punches the air. What a round for uh, Vojtek. Poland have a rider in the jump off. Six riders now. One for Poland, three for Italy, one for Germany, and one for Japan. Well, we go down into the final three riders in this Grand Prix. And we go now to Great Britain. Two riders for Great Britain. Anna Power jumped a few moments ago. Jamie Gornell is now with Carsten by Cassini the second, 13-year-old stallion. Unfortunately, Anna, who jumped a few moments ago, had two fences down. Ooh, a bit excited to move off with. Well, Jamie didn't grow up in the world of show jumping. In fact, he didn't really learn to ride until he was in his teens, but uh, made up for that later start and has been competing within the world of show jumping for the last 15 or so years now and ridden and trained with some of the best riders in the world. He started off show jumping, his show jumping career with uh, leading lady rider Di Lampard and uh, then has subsequently ridden and trained for a number of leading riders in Europe including the uh, German Olympic team show jumper, World Equestrian Games team gold medalist and European team gold medalist Yannicka Friedrich Meyer. Ooh. That was naughty and unexpected, I think. What will he do? Also trained with uh, John Whittaker, MBE. 
coming back for a second attempt. He is not keen to go down to this water. He's riding it well, but he's not. He is just, that was really naughty, Carsten. 13 years old, but he just says, nope, I am not going there. Disappointment for Jamie Gornall. Disappointment for the uh, for the British riders as well. Two fences down for Anna Power and elimination for Jamie Gornall and uh, Carsten in this FEI this Longin FEI jumping Grand Prix, just watching it come round again, gave him a really good uh, good boot to say, come on, we know we've got a job to get on with, but was not having a bite. Well, down to the final two riders, and it's uh, now Federica Johnson with uh, Coldplay. Watched him walk the course right at the end. He was one of the last to walk round the course. So he rides Coldplay by Contendro, 10-year-old Bay. This uh, gelding owned by Frederica Jonsson and uh, David uh, Ingerson. Father Jan won bronze at the uh, 1972 Olympic Games in Munich for eventing. And uh, Frederick, who is married to Pierre Pansu, who represented Finland in the world of eventing. So Pierre, who rode at the 2000 Olympic Games in uh, Sydney, and with wife Pierre Pansu, ooh, that was an unlucky rail, runs the stables at the Swedish National Equestrian Centre, pair train and compete horses for show jumping. So a total of four so far for Frederick Johnson and uh, Coldplay. So in fact, I've been saying jump off. It's not jump off because this is over two rounds. So it's the top 25% that go through to uh, <clears throat> that second round. So just the four time is just about okay as he flies the last in a uh, time of 81.12. Four penalties for Frederick Johnson and uh, Coldplay. Goes into eighth. Top 25 of the 50 go through into the second round with uh, one rider left to go. This is rider number 25 of the 50. Well, it's the final rider for Germany now, <coughs> Dennis Nielsen. And it's... Uh, just check this horse's name because different name came up. DSP Kashmoka came up. <laughs> Looks like it is DSP Kashmoka. Got to duff information on my sheet. So he is the last to go before the first of the breaks here in the arena before the arena drag and the last 25 come in to show jump so just a reminder it's uh, two rounds of jumping top 25 percent of the 50 go through into that uh, second round So this is the last to go before the break and still clear for Dennis and Nielsen. Big kick out after that poor Shockster. And another feisty, enjoying his job, ears pricked, galloping to this triple bar. 
has to hold for the six. Actually came down there beautifully on the seven, just take, taking a slightly wider line just to give himself the room. Just this final line then, Germany. I've had a good day so far. DSP Kashmoka at the final fence. Time is all right. It's good. It's clear. And it's inside the time. 82.33 for Dennis Nielsen and DSP Kashmoka. That takes them currently into seventh place. Well, what a round for uh, the German rider. Nala clear. We're building ourselves into a real crescendo here. 25 riders left to jump. And of them, some really good names to come. Here are the few in the jump off so far. The name I can't pronounce. Uh, Paolo Paini, Emilio Bicocci, Michael Cristofoletti, Tadahiro Hayashi, Mario Stevens. They're the uh, clear so far. Of course, the top 25% means that we'll have a few with penalties. Dennis Nielsen, last to go. He jumped clear. Thierry Rosier, one-time penalty. Frederick Jonsson, four penalties. Victoria Gullickson, Julia, Martinengo, Marque, and Zuzana Zelenkova. Vladimir Beletsky, Jan Bobic, Michael Kazamajek, Anna Parr for Great Britain, amongst those 18, Matthew Billow for France, and Maximilian Vector for Poland, 18 at the moment of the 25. That is the scores as we see them so far. 25 riders left to go after the break. Malin uh, Bayard Johnson, Henrik von Eckermann, amongst those, Jessica Springsteen. Uh, further down for Spain, Manuel Fernandez Saro. Then uh, Jana Frederica Meyer Zimmerman, Olivia Robert. Moving further down, we have Olivia, uh, Olivia Philippart, Hans Dieter Dreher, Peter DeVos, Kevin Stouts, Margie Goldstein Engel, and uh, they are out there in the last 50, uh, 25. So the music gets cranked up here in the break. We'll join you in a few moments' time for the last 25 here on FEI TV.
Gankiem na dworach w Sopocie rozmowy Conquest VKP model, który z jednej strony wykorzystuje najnowsze osiągnięcia w dziedzinie twardzu łączy ogromną precyzję wysoką technologię a do tego ma niezwykły sportowy wygląd So we're back with the live action here for the CSO Five Star, the Launching FEI Jumping Grand Prix here. Top 25% go through into the second round, or all of the clears, should there be more than more than that. And it's uh, Malin Barriard uh, Johnson now, H&M Q Chana for Sweden by Cardento 933, 12-year-old grey mare to kick off proceedings with the last 25. Well, Malin began riding very early on, very successful junior young rider, winning European Championship Team Silver back in 94, individual bronze in 95 at uh, young rider level. Since then, she's competed in uh, a number of FEI World Cup finals, four senior European Championships and four World Championships and three Olympic Games. Combination that um, have been going very well on the international circuit, Malin herself, that the Olympic Games in Athens in 2004 was team silver medalist with the butterfly flip. Third at the FBI World Cup Finals with the same horse in 2003. Former model and representative for clothing brand H&M. H&M Q Chana for Sweden. So just to explain again, if we only have seven clears, let's say, and it is 13 that will go through, the best scoring rounds will join those seven. If we have 13 clears, 13 clears will go through. And if we have 17 clears, 17 will go through. So it's all the clear rounds and then the fastest with uh, the least faults. This is getting at the second round. The first round, second half, off to a really good start. Sweden with a clear. Malin uh, Barra Johnson and uh, HMQ Chana. They jump a really good clear round in a time of 79.17. That's the second fastest of the 26 now that have gone. So we move to another Swedish rider. Sweden well represented here in the FBI Jumping Grand Prix, the Longines Grand Prix here in Sopot. Well, jumping now 
It is uh, Costello, 10-year-old Grey Gelding. Henrik von Eckermann, owned by Suzanne Tovek. Henrik von Eckermann, Costello for Sweden. Henrik, one of uh, only three brothers who could, who was really enthused with the riding bug. He began early riding. His breakthrough came when he started training with the Swedish Olympic rider Peter Fredriksson. Henrik was uh, on a young rider European team uh, silver in his final year of young riders. Started training, another one to be based with uh, Luca Berbham at the uh, stables in uh, Riesenbeck. And being a member of that team since 2002, competed at a number of European Championships and also at the London 2012 Olympic Games. So we've had eight clear rounds so far. Is this going to be clear round number nine? It is. Inside the time, 81.77 for Henrik von Eckermann and Costello. That is clear round number nine. Sweden on a really good form. Two riders for Sweden first after the break and two riders have gone clear. So really hotting up. So we now move on to Spain. Spain with a number of riders here, but uh, three in the Grand Prix. It is uh, Sergio Averas Moya and Lucino. Nine-year-old by Luciano. competed himself at uh, four European Championships in uh, 04, 2007, 2009, and again in 2013. Competed at World Championships, fifth individually in the 2009 Mediterranean Games with Action Breaker. So a member of the winning team at the FEI Nations Cup from promotional league final in 2012. That with the action breaker as well. Holds for the seven strides down to that upright at 11. Time a little bit. Is it going to be tight? Might just be okay. He's just got one fence. 83 seconds is the time allowed. He's going to be over. He is going to be over. One time penalty for uh, Sergio Alvarez Moya and uh, Lucino.
Well, now we move on to the United States of America. Jessica Springsteen and uh, Sina VA by Clamiro, 11-year-old Gray, owned by the Stonehill Farm. Jessica, another one of those that has ridden from a very early age. Started riding when she was just uh, five years old when the family moved to New Jersey. She won medals at the 2010 North American Young Rider Championships, been selected for Senior Nations Cup teams and reserve rider for the 2012 London Olympics. I should think being placed in the Queen's Cup at Spruce Meadows, one of the most memorable moments of her career so far. Daughter, of course, of uh, Bruce Springsteen. It was an 11-year-old jumping really well. And just giving him a really good ride. That was the commentator's curse, if ever I've heard it. Oh. Well, well, well. Just as things looked like they were going extremely well for uh, Jessica Springsteen and Sana VA, just takes real, upset of, uh, real exception to the triple bar and uh, two refusals, two run outs is elimination. Real disappointment for this uh, young rider, he really said no, didn't he, the first time, and uh, was having none of it the second time either. Well, that's horses for you, great levelers, we're told. Character building is what they say. Well, now Morris uh, Tebel and uh, Chaco's son for Germany, by Chaco Blue, 11-year-old stallion. Well, born pretty much into an equestrian family, Morris started riding with the ponies. And he rode with his first German jacket at the European Pony Championships at 13. In total, he's competed at seven different European Championships in pony, junior, young rider and senior categories. And competed for the first time at five-star level now, uh, five years ago, during the Longines Global Champions Tour of Wiesbaden, and won his first five-star class in Stuttgart in the following year, in 2014. Called up for the 2017 German team during the Nations Cup, and uh, his double clear allowed the German team to take that win in Aachen. So carrying the four penalties. Time's okay. 79. 80.37 is his time. Morris Tebel and uh, Chaco's son for Germany. Four penalties it is, it is in 80.37. Goes into 12th place. 13 go through to the second round. 25% of the 50. There was that rail down at 11. Unfortunate uh, rail down as well. So now it's uh, Niels uh, Bruinsiels. Niels with uh, Israel van der Dienuwe by Thunder van der Zutuwe, 10 year old Bay Mare. Representing Belgium. Mm 
And here's uh, Bruno Seals. And is Rail van der Dien Uwe for Belgium. Won the Grand Slam Grand Prix at the Dutch Masters Indoor in Brabant, the five star in Sotogenbosch earlier this year in the Netherlands. Formerly named the 2008 Talent of the Year in Belgium. Runs a very successful yard with Father Harry. They train horses for jumping. jumped beautifully down the line 9 10 and 11 taking a bit of a hold coming down to the treble and I need to just press in the middle he's ridden this really really well just inside the time allowed 82.28 clear round number 10 for the Belgian rider Nils Brunziels and Israel van der Dien Uwe 10 clears with some 22 riders left to go. In fact, 19 riders left to go. My math never been my strongest point. 19 riders left to go. We go back to Spain now. And it's uh, Manuel Fernandez Saro and Usador de Rue. Usador de Rue, 10 year old Grey Stallion by Crusador. <laughs> so, Manuel. Manuel Fernando Saro for Spain. Known as a fanfa to his friends, one of the most renowned riders in Spain. Helped the Spanish team earn their qualification for the European Championships in Aachen in 2015, which turned out to be a crucial factor for Spain's qualifying qualifying a team for the 2016 Rio Olympics. And last year, in fact, in 2016, the uh, now 43-year-old took part in those games, making his first, but not likely to be his last Olympic appearance. certainly been rising up the ranks in the Longines FEI World Rankings. Placed at the Lum London Olympia five star with his Rio Mount you watch previously. And there's another very good horse but it is the four penalties they're carrying that fence again goes at 11 and the time over as well so four jumping one time for Manuel Fernandez Saro and Dusador de Rue a total of five penalties Well, we move from Spain to Germany. It is uh, Gianni Frederik Meyer Zimmermann and uh, Budner's Minimax by Carrada NRW, nine year old Grey. So, uh, Gianni Frederik Meyer Zimmermann. father and mother Holsteiner horse breeders she's a former European Championship team gold medal winner but uh, in Madrid back in 2011 
boasts an enviable career profile. Highlights really include that gold at the World Equestrian Games in Lexington, Kentucky in 2010, and third place at the Global Champions Tour, the Grand Prix in Hamburg. But one of the highlights really was winning the Grand Prix of Aachen in 2011. Dumps well, water and five. So turning back to the Oxer at six. And now the Porsche, or Porsche, Oxer, however you like to say it. Let's hope she can leave this upright. This has been, uh, certainly in the second half of the first round, been a really influential fence. A number of riders having that down. Had 10 clear so far. 13 go through, being the top 25. But if we have more than 13 clears, then they will all go through into the second round. And she jumps a fantastic clear round, 81.40. Makes clear round number 11 for Germany. Yanni Federico Meyer Zimmerman and uh, Butina's Mini Max make light work of this track designed by Olaf Peterson Jr. from Germany. So looking down the <clears throat> final few to go, France represented Sweden, Spain again. Poland, they have a couple of riders still to come. Italy, Belgium, three riders, four riders for Belgium. Germany, USA and Sweden. Sweden is uh, with two riders as we now welcome Olivia Robert and Eros for France. 14 year olds. Well, France already with uh, one rider. No, it wasn't. In fact, Thierry Rosier had one time penalty just uh, looking back. So be looking for a good clear round because that one time may just present, prevent him from going into the second round, Thierry Rosier. Olivia Robert and Eros. Well competed at that uh, FEI World Cup final in Omaha last year. Not with this horse. And Oxer at 10. So coming down the final line, lost his stirrup. Makes it a little bit hard work. He's going to leave it. Stay in balance, jump the last. And the time's okay as well. 81.22 for Olivia Robert and Eros. But uh, four penalties in a time of 81.22 goes into 16th place outside that top 13. Let's watch him come down to this Oxer. He's got his eye on the next fence, just takes off and then goes a little bit belly low over the Oxer. Well, now we move to France. French got a good team of riders here at Sopot. It is Nicolas Delmotte and Vagabond de la Pomme. Had some really good form over the last uh, few years. One at the five star in Dinard last year.
to jump at the water. So France's best rider at the moment is Thierry Rosier and Venezia de Cossienne. They had just one time penalty. So coming home clear, four fences left. Beautifully through the treble. Time is just about okay. France do have a clear round and that will definitely go into the second round. Nicolas Delmotte and a Vagabond de la Pomme jump a fabulous clear. Look really confident the whole way through. So that is clear round number 12. At the moment in 13th place is Thierry Rosier with that one time penalty as we move to Sweden and it is uh, Irma Carlsen and Chakonu, Chakonu by Chaco Blue, 10 year old Bay Gelding. Irma Carlsen in uh, 2014 became the individual gold medalist at the European Championships in Arezzo in Italy and uh, just missed out on podium finish quite close at the top but they finished in sixth place in the team partner Doug de Sindelo has represented Sweden in show jumping as well Emma Carlson and the 10 year old Chakonu Well, not only have we had a few bogey fences out there on the course, the water, fence 11, the second fence, not proved too difficult, an enormous jump. The flag, I think, is going to go up. It has indeed. She stood a long way off the water. So yeah, not only has the time been difficult, but there have been a few bogey fences out there on course. And Olaf Peterson Jr. has, as I said at the very beginning, at the opening of the show, of, of the program, that it was a twisty technical track out there with some interesting lines that the riders have to ride. And this one of them, 9, 10 and 11, six strides and then seven strides. And that fence there has fallen quite a lot dur during the duration of this Longines FEI Jumping Grand Prix here in Sopot. Just the final fence. Time is going to be a little bit tight as well. Will she make the time? Just about makes the time. No, she doesn't. She is over the time. It is four jumping and one time. And a time of 83.34, just 34 one hundredths of a second over the time allowed of 83. It takes them on to five is their total. Here is the toe in the water, only just to clip the tape. He stood off a mile away from the water, really stretched out over it, but just couldn't make that tape on the backside of that water jump. Well, now uh, <clears throat> from Sweden, we go to Spain. This is the last rider for Spain in the Longines FEI Jumping Grand Prix. It's uh, Julio Arias and Durka de Brum. Durka de Brum by Cicero Z, nine-year-old Gramer. Great to see some nine-year-olds in this class. Well, in 2016, <coughs> he moved to Belgium. This is the third horse 
that has taken exception, the Hippodrome Sopot Water. I just wonder, once they say no, they seem to uh, get it in their heads and that's it, game over. Comes back for a second attempt, the ears aren't really focusing, the eyes aren't re really focusing. Is he going to jump it this time? No. Well, that a real shock for Julio Arias and uh, Dirk de Bruyne. It is elimination at the water. I actually thought he might have gone the second time. Although the eye wasn't looking, he looked more more that he was coming to the fence, but you can see he just just was having a not a bit of it. Well, from Spain, we go back to Poland. It's the second last uh, Polish rider, Krzysztof Ludwak. <laughs> Don't know if that's right. And uh, Stalando. Or Christoph Ludwijak and uh, Stalando for Poland. Poland already with uh, one in the jump off. Polczek von Cheniek, who jumps in the first half of these 50 riders out over the water. That looked fine. Well, Christoph himself was uh, part of the World Christian Games in Aachen back in 2006. Career spanning a uh, number of years. Ridden at uh, World Cup final in Las Vegas in uh, 2007, 11 years ago. Well, that rail at 11 goes. You can hear the crowd as well. Disappointment. So Poland only with one rider. Middle part of the treble goes as well. One rider in the second round at the moment. And it's uh, Volchek von Cheniak. And uh, Christoph Lufajak and Estelando, they have a total of eight jumping inside the time, 80.78. So they're well inside the time, but it is eight jumping for the Polish rider. Well, moving down towards the last 10 to go in the first round here of the Longines FEI Jumping Grand Prix. It is back to Italy. And a man that is on absolutely flying form. He's had some uh, incredibly big wins. Emmanuel Guadiano and Casper. And he rides this 12-year-old stallion by Berlin. Italy, who, of course, they've already got two clears with uh, Emilio Picocci and also Michael Cristofoletti. He jumped clear with Bologna. So looking for a good round here for the Italian. This is the last of the Italians to jump. Yeah, gets a reminder of the water. Jumps out across it, gets away with it as well. Pretty much his own technique coming down to five. <laughs> Competed at the uh, 2014 World Championships and uh, also at the 2011 and 13 European Championships. Bronze medalist with Admara at the Longines Global Champions Tour of Monaco in 2015. Well, the back rail of the triple bar goes. That is his first penalty out on course. Italy will only have two riders at the moment, I would think, 
in the second round. Well, just that final fence, the Longines upright, and uh, time is tight, but 82.79, just inside the, the time allowed of 83 seconds, total of four jumping in the time of 82.79, goes into 19, so outside the top 13 for uh, Emmanuel Guadiano and the Casper. Well, from Italy, we now go to uh, Belgium, and it's uh, Gudrun Petit and Seacoast Just the Music. Seacoast Just the Music by Torendo FCS. Guadam de Revel Lines, owned by uh, Gudrun herself and the uh, Seacoast Horses Syndicate, nine years old. Very successful junior young rider team member competing at the uh, Millennial European Championships in 2000, where the team finished ninth. And in 2004, she picked up a European team silver medal at the European Young Rider Championships. Can, she's collected uh, numerous titles in Belgium and uh, been very successful in Young Horse Championships as well. Well, I think the toe did go in the water. Front foot in the water. We'll just get to see if we can get that. Does go in. So four penalties for Goodwin Petit and Seacoast. Just the music. Hangs in the air over the Oxo as well. It's lost a little bit of concentration coming around the corner. A lot of these horses wearing the ear bonnets just to keep the concentration a little bit more. But as he turned around the corner, lost a little bit of the balance. So carrying eights now. She went down there on the six tries and actually jumped down there beautifully. The front rail of the last part of the Oxer also hits the floor. Time is okay, 81.43. Three fences down, total of 12 jumping. We stay with Belgium though, three riders on the trot. It is a good run Petit and the lovely Seacoast Just the Music, but they did have three fences down. This was the second, had a toe in the water. This was the back rail of the Oxer. That was their second fence. We're well, staying with uh, Belgique. It is uh, now Jerome Guerry and uh, Kelvin by Raphael, 11 year old chestnuts owned by the Avalon Partners. Well, Jérôme Gary and uh, Kelvin. Olympic show jump rider. He competed at the 2016 Rio de Janeiro Olympic Games in Brazil, where he finished just inside the top 30, 28th in the individual competition with the lovely horse Grand Cru, Van de Rosenberg. But this 11-year-old chestnut has it now all in front of him. gets very high in the air over the water and then just clips the second part of that double at five for four penalties.
So the rail 11 goes again. Back rail of the Oxer also falls. So it's been an expensive round. Total of 16 jumping. <coughs> Time's OK for uh, Jérôme Gorry and uh, Kelvin. Well, two riders for Belgium, one with 12, one with 16. It is uh, staying with Belgium. Third rider for Belgium now in this Longines FEI Jumping Grand Prix in the Hippodrome, Sopot, Livia Philipparts and Icos. Olivia, another one that started riding very early on, joined the Pony Club, came up through the ranks, very successful young rider, winning uh, three European medals. Twin brother, Nicola, he also an international show jumper, and the two regularly compete in the same competitions. Father Ludo and uncle uh, Johan are also international riders and coaches. And uh, Livia himself became the youngest rider to win the Spruce Meadows Grand Prix event in Calgary, in Canada, with his victory there back in 2012. He was uh, named the 2012 Flemish uh, Equestrian League Talent of the Year and uh, very much sight set on the Olympics in uh, 2020 in Tokyo. Competed already at a number of uh, championships. In 2010, he was the European champion and team bronze medalist with uh, Charisma, that wonderful horse he rode to great success in show jumping and uh, competed at the 2014 World Equestrian Games in Cart in Normandy. Carrying four penalties, though, it is so far. It isn't so far Belgium's day with... Uh, Goodwin Petit, Jérôme Maguri, now Olivier Philippart. He is uh, coming towards home. Gives the back rail of the triple a, a bit of a rub, but it stays in the cups. It's difficult upright. Just fighting for his stride there a little. Seven short strides, six forward strides. Down the final line. Middle part goes... So a total of eight for Olivia Philippart at the last. And the last goes as well. And over the time, one time penalty, total of 13. 12 jumping and one time false. Olivia Philippart and Icos for Belgium. Goes into 34th place at the moment. So proving to be a tough track we knew it would be we've had 12 clears we have about seven riders left to go will we see another one in the in the second round 13 it is that go through it is now hans dieter Dreher with nadal z owned by roland zanontelli by nameless r nine-year-old bay number of nine-year-olds in this Grand Prix. Ooh, really stands off the first. Another one that grew up with uh, horses and started riding at his father's uh, riding school when he was just a child. Placed at the Grand Prix in Arken a couple of years ago. A regular member of the Nations Cup team for Germany. And in 2013, he qualified then for his first FEI World Cup final. Competed at the final in 2013. And a former FEI Rookie of the Year. Working hard, carrying four. 
and I think the hand <coughs> may be going up, or has he just decided that yeah, something's gone on? I think he may be retiring, gets a pat. So, unfortunately, retiring is the hands of Dietadre and Nadal Z. Twelve clears in 13th at the moment is Thierry Rosier for France. One time penalty, 83.17. Sergio Rivera's Moira also had one but slower time. So that is the 13 that are going through those clears. We'll read through the clears at the end of this uh, first round. But the fastest with one is uh, the French rider Thierry Rosier. Well, we move on from uh, Germany to Belgium. Seven riders it is now left to go in this uh, Longines FEI Jumping Grand Prix. And it's uh, Peter De Vos and Jin D. Well, another one, former talent of the year by the Flemish Horse Riding League in uh, the mid to late 2000, 2008, I think it was. Competed at uh, European level at Young Riders World Championships in 2014. Been a regular member of the Longines Global Champions Tour. Won uh, one of those legs at Shanghai with Dream of India, Guifield, that in 2014. And a bronze medalist with Candy in 2015 at the Miami Beach Grand Prix in that low Longines Global Champions Tour. An enormous jump out over the water, riding in double reins. Just stays out of the way. It was lovely to see him, Peter DeVos, as he jumps out over that second part. Just get out, out of the way of the horse and allow him to use himself to the maximum over that second part, over that uh, upright. Six strides down to 10. And I think six down to 11. Ooh. An enormous jump. Peter DeVos just tips forward on landing. Then back in balance down to the Longines treble. Ears pricked. Beautiful. Time is going to be tight. He's not going to make the time. It is over. 84.79. A shake of the head. He knows that that time fault is costly. Peter DeVos and Jin D. 84.79 goes into 15th place. 13th place is still being protected by Thierry Rosier for France, the fastest of the one falters so far. With six riders left to go Poland, USA, France, USA, Sweden, and USA. USA with three riders in the final, th final six. Devin Ryan, Margie Golson Engel never put her out of contention, and Lily Keenan last to go. Well, moving on from. Uh, Belgium, we go back to Poland, and it's Yaroslav. Uh oh. I'll have to read that one again. Uh, Chakiana, Chaka, Chaklana is the horse, nine year old bay mare by Chaco Blue. Number of horses by Chaco Blue. So, going with uh, Yaroslav Skorzynski for Poland. Apologies to the Polish viewers. My pure ignorance with the pronunciations of these uh, Polish names. It's owned by uh, Mariola Dryak, nine years old. So the bell goes. Poland, sixth last to jump out of the 50 riders that we've had.
uh, Yaroslav Skorzynski and uh, Czeklana. The third. Lovely big jump over that Oxer at three. And then quickly on down to the water. Jumps well out over the water. Then get the, the uh, brakes, this, brakes sorted before the double at 5A and 5B. Jump through there really well. Really positive bit of riding. This is looking good. This is looking very good indeed. Sees a flyer to the ascending triple rail. Down to the Oxer, gets a little bit close. That was well adjusted because he was on a bit of a wing and a prayer going down to 11, but just sat up and readjusted the stride. So it's just the treble. Now the last, time is good. Poland want this. Poland get it. Yaroslav Skradinsky and uh, Czaklana jump clear. That is clear round number 13. And the second fastest of this round. That now knocks Thierry Rosier and uh, the French out of uh, the French rider Thierry Rosier out of the top 13 with that one time penalty because we now have 13 clear rounds. Any more clear rounds, they will join those 13 in the top 25% of this Longines FEI Jumping Grand Prix here in Poland. Devin Ryan now for the United States of America, Eddie Blue. Eddie Blue by VDL uh, Zirocco Blue, nine-year-old Grey Gelding. Real rising star of the equestrian sport of show jumping. One of his uh, greatest talents is his ability to assess a young horse and really identify its future, future potential. Currently developing a team of horses which uh, he began training from uh, very early on in their careers right up to the Grand Prix level now. And 2010 was a breakthrough year for him as he earned three Grand Prix titles at multiple top finishes abroad. Uh, aboard, no worries, a nine-year-old self Francais owned by Barbara Rowland. That uh, really set his career alight. He's also enjoyed many successes within the young jumper six and seven or eight-year-old divisions, ranking him uh, first in zone two for his standings. That's uh, ever-changing, of course, and he just continues to rise up the rank. He um, very much distinguishes himself by his level of hard work and perseverance. Great rider to have on uh, the team. Very much goal orientated and uh, he's looking to be recognized as a talent in the international circuits for show jumping. And ever searching to find the equine partner to carry him to the dizzy heights and he certainly is uh, finding them Eddie Blue just a nine-year-old former rider for uh, Alan Waldman in Holland one of the uh, top sport horse barns in the Netherlands Competed at European competitions incorporating both American and European riding styles and techniques. Great learner. Very much a sponge in this sport. Learn from the best. See what works for you. Time is looking okay. United States of America have uh, another in the second round. That's clear round number 14. Devin Ryan, Eddie Blue, great round for them in a time of 81.21 seconds. Seventh fastest clear round. So that qualifies them for round two. One for France, one for USA. In fact, two for USA, one for France and uh, one for Sweden. Left to go, four riders it is. Kevin Stout and uh, Silver Dur. De Verton HDC. Silver de, de Verton HDC. 
by Kashmir Van Schutterdorf, 12 year old stallion. Or owned by Arad de Coudret. Well, what this man hasn't achieved needs a little really to explain. Team Gold at the Olympics in Rio, Team Silver at uh, two World Championships in Kentucky in 2010, Normandy in France in Cap on the home soil, Team Silver back in 2014, European Gold individual at Windsor in 2009, former European team gold medalist, French junior individual champion, and now with uh, this 12-year-old stallion, this uh, chestnut, he starts paving another career. gives the front rail a little bit of a rub but it stays in the cups he's just got one fence left to jump looks okay looks time looks good for the last fence can you believe it the last fence hits the floor Kevin Stout and uh, Silver de Deverton Edge DC inside the time 80.68 but it is uh, that last fence on the floor for Kevin so France and it's uh, their last rider Two for the United States and one for Sweden left to go. Well, a lady that is on fire. Margie Goldson Engel with Royce. Royce, 14 years old by Cafe Ole. Stallion owned by the Glade Winds Partners for the United States of America winner of the Grand Prix, that five-star Grand Prix in Wellington back in March in, uh, the, of this year. Winner of no less than six World Cups, over 20 Nations Cups as well. Native of Miami in Florida, where she started riding in the uh, early days. With over 200 Grand Prix wins under her belt, she's been uh, named the rider of the year no less than 10 times and has been on more than 20 winning nation cup teams <laughs> 60 years young Very much known for her infectious humour. Real favourites on and off the circuits. Just the last. What a round. 80.42. Fifth fastest round as well for Margie Golson Angle and Royce. Clear round number 15. 15 will go through to the second round now. Well, there's no stopping this lady. She is on really good form, absolutely flying. As we come down to the final two riders, one of those Swiss, one of those from the States. Two very good riders left as well. And for Sweden it is now Evelina Tovek and Mil Sheridan by Empire. Ten-year-old Bay Stallion comes from a family passionate about horses 
Her sister, younger sister, Isabella, competes in dressage professionally, which means the sisters, they don't have much an opportunity to uh, squabble amongst themselves. All the horses at uh, home or at competitions and very much able to help each other. A few years ago, she won the uh, Lovsta Challenge with, with her then very good horse, Os de Brev, and represents uh, Varberg Riding Club and uh, competes very much so for Team Sweden. Evelina Tovek and Mill Sheridan. Penultimate rider in this Longines FEI Jumping Grand Prix. at the Oxa, just uh, dived a little bit to it, then readjusted her stride. She was very clever the way she landed after the Oxa because she knew she'd just needed to do that little bit of adjustment before the upright. It's gone down a few times, We're really high in the air over the middle part. Just the last to jump. Time is okay. Very close to the last fence. I mean, just needs, needed to adjust her hat. Her hat just to slip down a little bit, but that is a clear round, clear round number 16 in a time of 81.29 for Evelina Tovek and Mill Sheridan. Just watch coming down this line, really high in the air over the middle part, and then gets really close to the last fence, just to change her mind slightly, but it was very clever. 10 years old, Mill Sheridan, and it made that look easy. Well, now we are on to the final rider, and it is for the United States of America. Now Lily Keenan, and uh, Fibonacci by for feeling 13 year old gray so the last rider 16 clear so far can USA make it another So still clear, just totting up the horses going through into the second round. It is a total of 16 at the moment. USA with two in the second round. Can Lily Keenan make it three? She does. She jumps the last 80.60. So that makes it 17 through into the second round. 17 riders for round two of the Longines FEI Jumping Grand Prix here at Sopos in Poland. What an afternoon. Just over two and a quarter, about two and a quarter hours of jumping. We'll have a quick uh, turnaround here. But of those 17 going through, we'll try and bring you those top 17. Just have a slight course change now and a rejig. It is uh, Vojek, Volcheniak, Yaroslav uh, Skrzynki, Mainin Barriard Johnson for Sweden, Paolo Paini, Margie Golson Engel, Lily Keenan for the United States, United States with three, Emilio Bicocci, Michael, Christoph Folletti, Devin Ryan, Evelina Tovek, 
Tadahiro Haishi, uh, Yane Frederick, and uh, Nicholas Del Mott, Henrik von Eckermann, Mario Stevens, Nils Brunsils in those uh, 17. One for Japan, three for Italy, three for Germany, two for Poland, three for Sweden, one for Belgium, one for France, and three for the United States of America. Well, the music gets ranked up again here in the main arena. We'll be back with that second round after this short break. We'll see you then.
he's good, he's up there. Look at he that, he's a nice right. hitting. Oh, he's in France. Go man, just the oxer. Will he be champion? Is he going to win the final here? Yes, he is! What an incredibly historic moment. Tension is mounting here. We are in for two momentous rounds of jumping. You can hear the crowds, they're getting very, very excited. He's good, he's up there. Look at he that, he's a nice right. hitting. Oh, in France. Go man. Just the answer. Will he be champion? Is he going to win the final here? Tension is mounting here. We are in for two momentous rounds of jumping. We can hear the crowds. They're getting very, very excited. He's good. He's up there. Look at he that. He's a nice right. hitting. Oh, in France. Go man. Just the oxer. Will he be champion? Is he going to win the final here?
Well, welcome back to the second round of the Longines Grand Prix here in Sopot. It is the Longines FEI Jumping Grand Prix CSIO 5 Star Sopot 2018. 17 riders come forward to contest the second round. And of those, one for Japan, two for, in fact, three for Italy, three for Germany, two for Poland, the home nation, three for Sweden, one each for Belgium and France, and three for the United States of America. Running in reverse order after round one. So the uh, slowest of the clear rounds goes first with the fastest of the clear rounds going uh, very last. And that is the Polish rider and we're looking forward to seeing him because he rode a really cracking round in the first round. Of those 17, you can see Margie Golson Engel, she will be 13th out. Maylin Barriard Johnson 15th with uh, Yaroslav Skrajinski, he goes second last. And then the final rider, will be Volchek, Volcheniak, he will be the last. Well, this uh, second round starts off uh, fairly similarly, over fence at one, and then round the left-hand turn to two, the turn back after the upright at two, they come to the Oxa at three. Now the new fences come into play. Fence at 15 in the middle of the arena, the upright, and then 16, which is the new Oxa, was uh, used in the last round that was fence 11 and then the turn this is where the crucial part will come at 5b just the last element but this is where it all can be won and lost at the fence the just that single fence then 12a and b the first two parts of the longine treble and then galloping down to the final fence the longine upright at 13 fences 1 2 3 15 16 5b 12a b and 13 fastest round will win 17 clears we had of the 50 that started round one and uh, we're about to go live we're about to have our first horse into this uh, main arena here in the hippodrome sopot and uh, what a place this equestrian center has developed into and the crowds are all seated got a little bit chilly now the uh, cloud cover the sun's disappeared from view but the vip's enjoying their time here watching the Longines FEI Jumping Grand Prix, of course, culminating with the really exciting fourth leg of the European division on Sunday. That's all live on FEI TV with a start time of 2 p.m. Leg four of eight, and it's really starting to build into a crescendo now. Well, that starting order, Dennis Nielsen will be first out with the DSP Kashmoka, Nils Brunsils. Israel van der Dienhove, Mario Stevens for Germany, Landano, Henrik von Eckermann, Castello for Sweden, Nicolas Delmort for France, Vagabond de la Pomme, Jana Frederik Meyer Zimmermann and uh, Butner's Minimax for Germany, Tadahiro Hayashi for Japan, Korana's M&M, Evelina Tovac, Mil Sheridan, Devin Ryan, Eddie Blue, Michael Cristofoletti, Belloni, Emilio Bicocci, and Call Me, Lily Keenan, Margie Golson Engel, Paolo Paini, Melin Barad Johnson, Jaroslav Skrzynski, and then the final rider for Poland will be Volchek Volcheniak. And uh, we now have our first horse into the arena. Well, the track uh, designed again, this is Dennis Nielsen, DSP Kashmoka by Olaf Peterson Jr. for Germany. And this is our trailblazer for round two. Well, what a way to start with this uh, second round. Just taking a turn before the first fence. So here we go. Over the Longines Oxer. He skipped and kicked his round, way around the first round, starting off in fairly similar fashion.
Now the new fence at 15. It's upright, and then on to 16. Now an Oxer was an upright in the last round. Now this is the crucial turn. 360 degree turn, back to 5B. Nails that. Now gallops home. Dennis Nielsen for Germany. 12A, B, now just the last. This is a really good start. And clears the last. 49.06 is his time. That now the time to beat. Well, what a way to get this second round. Off to a great start. Dennis Nielsen for Germany sets the president. DSP Kashmoka clear 49.06. Well, now it's uh, Belgium. Belgium with just the one rider, Niels Brunsiels, Israel van der Dien Uwe, 10 year old Bay Mare by Thunder van der Zut Uwe. Belgium, three nations with one rider, Japan, Belgium, France. Eight nations come forward to this second round. Thirteen nations in total. Oh, the rail goes at three. And out of those thirteen nations, only eight through to this second round. Real opportunity for the horses just to run out through their right shoulder there. Important for the riders just to get them back on four square. 12 AB. And it clears the last in a time of 50.63. Well, the second rider then for Belgium, Niels Brunsils and Israel van der Dien Uwe. Four penalties in 50.63 as we now go back to Germany. Mario Stevens and Landano. This Oldenburg, nine-year-old Dark Bay Gelding by Lord Pezzi. So Germany currently leading 49.06. Dennis Nielsen, DSP Kashmoka. Germany with three riders. The last of the German riders <coughs> will be uh, Janne Frederik Mayer Zimmermann, sixth out. Gets high over the second. Really quick turn round to three, taking it on the angle. Pops over that. But the rail goes at 16. Tight turn back to 5B. Now this final line, 12AB, the Longines double. Ox are in, upright out. Now just the final fence. This Longines upright. And the last goes as well. It's a total of eight jumping in a time of 49.87. So just some running repairs going on. I think that Longines rail did uh, make a bit of a noise when he hit it. So just going to replace that last rail. Henrik von Eckermann, Castello for Sweden now. By Cristado, 10 years old. Fourth rider of the 17. Sweden with three. This is the first of the Swedish riders. That rail now been replaced. 
So still leading. First to go, Dennis Nielsen and DSP Kashimoka. They were clear, 49.06. just going down to the far end of the arena to start his round starting off with a little bit more at purpose certainly than the first round lands and quickly away onto this upright at two has caused a few problems gives it a bit of a rub but it does stay in the cups very fast turn around to three on the angle again gives the front rail a rub stands off 15, gallops down to this Oxer. Now a tight turn needed, tight turn required. Eyes on, locks on, pops over 5B. It looks like game on for Henrik von Eckermann and Castello. Needs to keep moving down this final line. Just the last to jump, increases the pressure, takes it away just to make sure he nails the last 45.86. That goes into the lead, 45.86 for Sweden. Henrik von Eckermann, Castello, take the lead. I think we're going to see probably some faster times, whether they can leave all the poles up. He just added a couple of strides, added one stride down to that final fence. Knew he was a little bit far off it. Well, we turn to France now. France with only one rider, Nicolas Delmotte, Vagabond de la Pomme, is our next to uh, take on this second round, designed by Olaf Peterson Jr. for Germany. Of course, the designer, of course, builder here, Nicolas Delmotte, with uh, Genevieve Megrets, Vagabond de la Pomme. Superb round in the first round. Oh, just hits the front rail though for four. I think certainly taken the foot off the accelerator a little bit. 13 year old stallion. And down to the final fence in a time of 51.55. Four jumping for Nicolas Delmotte, Vagabond de la Pomme. Well, we've only had, uh, we've had two clear rounds. First of those was uh, Dennis Nielsen for Germany. Then uh, Henrik von Eckermann, fastest round so far. It is now on to Germany again. Janne Frederica Meyer Zimmerman and uh, Budner's Mini Max, nine year old grey. Really knifing across the second. Let's say she's necessarily the quickest around the turn to the third, but only nine years old. She'll be wanting good experience for this lovely grey. Sees a good stride down to the new fence 16 with the back rail on, taking a nice turn, just so as he's got eyes on this fence at 5B. Again, pops across on the angle. Just three fences left to jump. What a round for this nine-year-old. Now just the last. Not quite going to make the time. Sees a flyer to the launching upright in a time of 50.82. Goes third. 
So, uh, Yanni Federic, Maya Zimmerman, and uh, Butner's Mini Max, third place, clear, 50.82. Well, from uh, Germany, we go to Japan, and it's uh, Na Tadahiro, Hayashi, and Karana's M&M, owned by Tadahiro himself, and uh, Tadayoshi Hayashi, 11-year-old great by Untouchable. Based with uh, Ludger Berman, produces many young horses up to international level. Very talented young young man. Great to see him here on the European circuit. And he'll give this one a crack, I'm sure. It's a little bit close to the Oxford at three. Lands and presses. Deceptively long stride on this 11-year-old. Gets quite close to five, but is very clever, very athletic. Crowds are waving. Down to the final three fences, the Longines double in over the Oxer, up over the E, upright, but has that down. So carrying four. And over the last in a time of 49.04. Four penalties goes fourth. So Tadahiro, Hayashi, and Corona's M and M, just that one fence down was looking uh, oh so very good until that rail hit the floor. It wasn't the quickest of rounds, really long stride on, on that to 11 year old Gray, but it's now Evelina Tovek and Mill Sheridan, 10 years old by Emperor Empire, owned by Suzanne Tovek, representing Sweden. Sweden with three riders in this Second round, and of course, leading for Sweden, Henrik von Eckermann and Castello on a clear round in a time of 45.86. Takes a chance at the third, cuts across that, jumps it on the angle. Stands off 15, then on to the Oxer. Sees a stride a long way out. Stands off that, then this crucial handbrake turn back to 5B. She's tight. Oh, just gives it a bit of a rub. 45.86, the time to beat. Not going to quite get there. Just the final fence. Going to have to take a bit of a chance. Jumps it, 49.67, goes into third place. Really good clear round for Evelina Tovek and uh, Mil Sheridan. Clear round number four, but the fastest of the clear round so far is Henrik von Eckermann, 45.86 in second place. On a clear round in 49.06 is Dennis Nielsen, first to go, DSP, Kashimoka, and now third, Evelina Tovek. Well, from Sweden, we go to the United States of America, Devin Ryan, Eddie Blue. This owned by the uh, Lee Show Jumpers LLC, nine-year-old by VDL Zarocco Blue. United States of America with uh, three riders. This, the first of them, Lily Keenan and uh, Margaret Golson Engel will be coming a little later on in a couple of horses' time. <laughs> well,
Well, takes a chance down to two, absolutely flying down to the second. Is taking a pull on the turn to the Oxer at three. Oh, and the back rail goes. Looked like he really meant business as he started off. Determined riding from Devon Ryan. Eddie Blue comes around to 5B, this Lotto upright. Clever, cat-like. Front rail goes on the Oxer. Another four penalties to add. And jumps the last. 48.53. Goes into eighth place so far. There is that current leaderboard, Henrik von Eckermann at the top, clear, 45.86, then Dennis Nielsen in second, clear, 49.06, now uh, Michael Cristofoletti with uh, Belloni for Italy, first of uh, three Italian riders. Belloni by Ballo de Rue, 11 years old. Italy with three riders in the second round. Matching that, Germany with three, Sweden with three, and USA with three. So Michael Cristofoletti and uh, Baloney turning to the third gets close and comes down on the back rail. And gets close to 5B, loses the strip, nearly gets unseated, but just now regaining. Is he going to? No, he's going to come. He's going to just use his heel and the stirrup. He might have just got it back as he got it back just about. So coming down to the final fence, Michael Cristofoletti and uh, Bologna, they clear the last. 51.93 is their time. Currently goes into eighth place. 51.93 and four jumping penalties. Goes eighth. So we saw briefly the mini leaderboard, and that mini leaderboard is still Henrik von Eckermann out in front, 45.86. Six riders left to go. We stay with Italy. And it's now uh, Emilio Bicocci and Cool Me, 11 year old stallion by Contendro the second. Owned by Filippo Matsai, Holsteiner. And again, really impressive in round one. Quickly away from three to 15 in this second round. High in the air over the Oxer at 16 turns back and to come across on the angle he fights quite a lot he fought a lot in the first round then uh, has that down just wasn't really paying attention Emilio did all he could tried to stay tight tried to stay on a uh, tight line just the final fence the Longines upright in a time of 49.88 goes into sixth place 49.88 for Emilio Bicocci and uh, Call Me for penalties. Well, five riders left, and it's two for the United States, one for Italy, one for Sweden, and one for Poland. We're staying with United States. Well, no, we move on to United States. This second rider for the United States of America, Lily Keenan. Lily riding Fibonacci by for feeling 13 year old Gray. Lily Keenan for the United States of America.
riding for the Chesnet Farm LLC. This is rider number 12 of 17. Rail goes at three. So in fact, I said there was one for Poland. It is, in fact, five riders left. One for USA, one for Italy, one for Sweden, two for Poland. The Fibonacci coming down to the final fence on an absolute flyer. <laughs> Clears that well in a time of 48.19. 48.19 goes into fifth place. So that is the fastest of the four falters so far. Goes fifth. Lily Keenan and Fibonacci for the United States of America. Staying with the United States of America and a lady that is on absolutely flying form, winner of the five-star Grand Prix in Wellington, Margie Goldstein Engel, and she rides Royce by Cafe Oule, 14 years old, owned by the Gladewinds Partners. Do not count this lady out because she, in a in a jump off situation, is very fast against the clock. Takes a bit of a chance at the second. Margie saw her stride a long way away, as she has done the third as well. She is flying. The lovely way she rides these horses on a fairly long rein, just gives them the freedom they need. Pops out over 5B. Now the gallop towards home. Margie knows this is on. This is uh, a great round so far. 12AB, now just the last. She is on if she can just keep kicking. She's not quite going to make it, I don't think. 46.40. Goes into second. 46.40. Well, what a round for United States of America. Margie Goldson Engel, Royce, go into second place behind Henrik von Eckermann on 45.86. Castello is still the time to beat he was fourth out as we now go back to italy paolo paini and uh, ottava maga vigila de casa g so ottava Mara Viglia de Katsaji. Twelve year old second fence goes. It's low over fifteen. But it does stay. In fact, I think it may have gone. It did go. And also 16. So expensive round for the Italian. Makes a wide, sensible wide turn. Knows that it's really out now. He's out of contention. <clears throat> Just coming down to these last three fences. Longines all the way. Boxer upright and one more upright. And has the last as well, total of 16 jumping for Paolo and uh, Ottava Maga Viglia di Cazza G in a time of 55.71. Three riders left to go. 
in this Longines FBI Jumping Grand Prix. And it's uh, Maylin Barra Johnson and H&M Kuchana. She's just asking for a pole to be rolled. That's at uh, fence 15. So Maylin Barra Johnson. H&M Kuchana by Cardento, 933, 12-year-old mare. Third last to jump for Sweden. Then two for Poland. Fastest two rounds after the first round. And the Polish crowd are still here. In fact, it looks like there's more people in the stands. In absolutely flying. H&M Kuchana is operating. Oh, just kicks out and has that rail down. So kicked out behind, just lowered, a, lowered that hind leg then. She could still be the fastest for Falter. Fastest of those four falters is uh, Lily Keenan at the moment, lying in sixth place. And jumps the last, 49.39, goes eighth. Well, Maylin uh, Barry Johnson and uh, H&M Kuchana, four penalties, 49.39, goes into eighth place at the moment. We move into the final two, and it's two for Poland, two for the home nation, and it's Yaroslav Skrzynski and uh, Chaklana. Chaklana by Chako Blue, nine-year-old mare. What can this man do? Having a good look around the arena, seeing where all of the turns are. It's a different thing when they take a few fences out. The, the, the space suddenly opens up, and there's a real chance to put your foot down, put the pedal to the metal, and really get going. Let the throttle out. So, Jaroslav Skrzynski and Czaklana for Poland. Owned by Mariola Direk. Wow. As I look behind him, it's all fine. Yaroslav, keep going. Oh, the crowd are behind him. You can feel them riding every step of the way. If he can go clear, Oh, he's fast too. Come on, come on, come on. Keep kicking. He's done it. And he's gone into third place. Not quite quick enough, but a really good clear on home soil for Yaroslav Trzginski and Jack Lana. Clear. 46.46 was his time. Well, a really good effort from the uh, Polish rider. As we go to the final rider in this Longines FBI Jumping Grand Prix, and it is for Poland. It's now the time of uh, Wojciech Wojciech and uh, Nakod Moloney. Nakod Moloney by Navabderev, nine-year-old Bay Stallion. Wojciech. Volchenyak. What can he do? Can he leave all the poles up? And can he knock Henrik von Eckermann off of top spots? He's sitting pretty there at the moment. 45.86 is the time to beat. I would say he's not quite fast enough at the moment. He needs to increase the pressure. He needs to speed up coming towards home. 
he's steady. He's not going to quite get it. It is going to be Sweden taking the top honours. He is clear, though. 47.6. He goes into fourth place. Great round there. 47.60. Into fourth. For uh, Volchek. Volchiniak. Great round. But it goes to Sweden. The leaderboard and the final result Henrik von Eckham and Costello 45.86 in second for the United States of America Margie Goldstein Engel and Royce third is Yaroslav Stratinsky and Chaklana in fourth place Volchek Volcheniak in sixth place is uh, Yanni Federica Meyer Zimmerman eighth Lily Keenan ninth Tadahiro Hayashi tenth Melin Barra Johnson 11th Emilio Bicocci, 13th Nicolas, Nicola Delmont, 14th Michael uh, Cristofelletti, 15th Devon Ryan, 16th Mario Stevens, and uh, that completes the uh, Longines Grand Prix here in Sopot. Stay with us for the prize giving. We will have the prize giving here of the uh, top few, but what a round for Henrik von Eckermann and Castello. Clear in 45.86. Second place, and it was a really closely fought contest, but in second place for the United States of America, Margaret Goldstein Engel and Royce, 46.40. Then we go down into uh, third place was uh, Jaroslav Skrzynski and Jack Lana, 46.646. And in fourth place, the last rider to go, Wojciech Wojciech and uh, Nakur Maloney, 47.60. We'll bring you the, uh, they, well, they're pretty much confirmed to us. We'll bring you, though, the uh, confirmed scores and that very important uh, prize giving momentarily we'll just be a few seconds away from that as we start moving the fences out of the way preparing for the presentation of awards the officials all getting ready to come in and present those prizes for the Longines FEI Jumping Grand Prix presented by Longines over two rounds and uh, 17 of the 50 came forward for that second round here in the main arena. Sopot, the Hippodrome Sopot Equestrian Centre has presented a top class field in this Grand Prix and it certainly hasn't disappointed. Course designer for the Grand Prix, Olaf Peterson Jr. for Germany, well again we mentioned earlier when we walked the course, when we came out after final preparations, that it was going to be a tough ask and a tough track, and it certainly did prove that. Top 25% went through to the second round, but we had 17 clears of those 88 nations, and uh, it was well represented across the board. One rider for Japan, three for Italy and Germany, and Sweden and USA two for Poland and then one for Belgium and one for France but uh, victorious here for Sweden it was Henrik von Eckermann Castello in a very fast time of 45.86 10 years old by Cristallo second place to Margie Goldstein Engel and the Glade wins partners Royce 14 years old by Café Olé well they uh, tried their very best but it wasn't quite quick enough, 46.40, with uh, third place going to the highest placed rider for the home nation for Poland, Jaroslav Skrzynski and Czaklana. Just nine years old by Czako Blue. What a round they uh, posted. And in fourth place for Poland again, Wojciech Wojciech and uh, Nakord Maloney by Nabaderev. Nine years old, two horses, nine years of age in the top four. Well, I said that prize giving will be imminently, so if you're watching, wherever you're watching all around the world, do stay with us, as we will be bringing that to you live here on FEI TV.
Tutaj, tak? Tu w rządku się na razie ustawcie, bo... Ale przykro mi, to są akredytowani fotografowie, więc muszą się najpierw tak ustawić. Zaraz zobaczymy, czy się da zrobić jakieś miejsce. So just uh, finalizing those uh, top six in this FEI class, the launching FEI Jumping Grand Prix presentation party are uh, now in position for the prize giving ceremony. It was Henrik von Eckermann for Sweden that took the top spot on 40 with a clear in 45.86. Longine Watch going to the winner of this class, Margie Golstan Engel, second for the United States. Jaroslaw uh, Skrodzinski in third for Poland. At Poland, who had a remarkable second round with uh, Wolczek, Wolczyniak in uh, third. In fourth was Dennis Nielsen, really set the gauntlet, to chuck the gauntlet down. First out for Germany finishing in fifth place with Evelina Tobek for Sweden in sixth in a time of 49.67. So uh, it was 17 that came forward and of those we had seven clear rounds. Really was a great contest and we're joined by the Longines representative Leszek Piotrze, brand manager of uh, Longines Poland, the FBI representative Stefan Ellenbruch for uh, Voivode Pomeranian Darius Droish, president of the event, also uh, down with the presentation party, the event director Agata 
Yajivska, Vice President of the Polish Equestrian Federation. Gona by Chayak. The ride is just being dressed for the prize giving here in the Hippodrome Sokot Equestrian Centre Main Arena. Coming into the arena in fifth place there, Dennis Nielsen. Evelina Tobek just walked in. In fourth was for Poland. Bocek Bocheniak. Third, uh, Yaroslav Stradzinski. Second, United States of America, Margie Golshan Engel and uh, Royce. Just a few seconds, a few one hundredths of a second off of that top spot. But there, Henrik von Eckermann and Costello, the winners of the launching FEI Jumping Grand Prix here in Sopot, really setting up a exciting climax towards those the fourth leg of the launching FEI Jumping Nations Cup on Sunday afternoon at two o'clock that all live on fei tv hope you can join us for that set a reminder for the fourth leg as we come to the presentation of awards henrik von eckerman steps forward between the branded longine pillars the jump stands <laughs> So we'll now stand for the national anthem of Sweden. Congratulations to the winner of the Longines FBI Jumping Grand Prix, Henrik von Eckermann, with uh, Suzanne Tovex Castello, and stepping forward, the Longines representative Leszek Pilch to present the Longines watch to the winner. Doesn't look like Castello wants uh, Henrik to have a watch as the official photographs just being taken for our winner. So now stepping forward. Stefan Ellenbruch, the FEI representative to congratulate our winner.
so our event director and uh, president of the event, congratulating Henrik von Eckermann. Now for the Pomeranian Darius Dreisch. Too interested. <laughs> so the flower's just been given to Henrik von Eckermann as well. Just showing their appreciation to the winner of the Longines FEI Jumping Grand Prix, Henrik von Eckermann and Suzanne Tovex Castello. And the presentation party step forwards or backwards to congratulate the second place combination, Margie Golton Engel and Royce. Really did give it their best shot. 45.86, the winning round. 46.40, Margie goes and en angles that round with Royce. Just behind Henrik von Eckermann, USA second. Presentation party now moving on to third place, and we'll hear a roar, I'm sure. Yaroslav uh, Skrzynski and Chakolana, Chaklana. Third place in this Longines FEI Jumping Grand Prix. Gave it his best shot, 46.46, only six one hundredth of a second behind second place very tight at the top in this second round. So the brand manager for Longines Poland, the FEI representative, president of the event and the event director, all congratulating third place as we move to fourth and in fourth place was Wojciech Wojciech with uh, Nakord Maloney in fourth for Poland. Sweden, USA, Poland, Poland, Germany, and Sweden making up our top six. Huge congratulations to Wojciech von Chiliak. Really a closely fought battle, and he really gave it his best in the arena. In fifth place for Germany, Dennis Nielsen. Dennis uh, first to go in this second round. Riding DSP Kashmoka, being congratulated. And now the congratulations go to Evelina Tovek with Mil Sheridan. Mil Sheridan, owned by Suzanne Tovek. Same uh, owner as uh, Henrik von Eckermann's at Castello. Two horses for Suzanne in the top six. So very grateful to our owners and all of our hardworking team, but especially the grooms that do an amazing job. And again, they've turned these horses out to perfection here in the main arena. Thanks to our presentation party, to the Longine representative, brand manager of Longine Poland, FEI representative, to the event director and the president of the event. It's uh, now time to clear the arena as they start on their lap of honour here in the Hippodrome Sopot. A win for Sweden. 
Henrik von Eckermann Castello. In second place for United States of America, Margie Goldstein Engel and Royce. In third, Jaroslaw Strudinski and Czaklana. In fourth for Poland, Wojciech Wojciech and Nakord Maloney. In fifth for Germany, Dennis Nielsen, DSP Kashmoka. And in sixth for Sweden, Evelina Tovek and Mil Sheridan. There is our winner and the crowd giving him a huge round of applause. Henrik von Eckermann for Sweden. Sweden with two in the top six. Poland for two in the top six. This makes for an extremely exciting climax to the event on Sunday, which builds to a crescendo. It is Nations Cup jumping. The Longines FEI jumping Nations Cup of Poland comes here and it is live across the board from two o'clock on FEI TV. But once again, we show our appreciation and we show our congratulations to the winner of today's FEI, Longin FEI Jumping Grand Prix. For Sweden, Henrik von Eckermann and Castello. Victorious, triumphant and well deserved. Well, all that's left to say is that the top six have now left the arena. The course will now be will all be thinking forwards to the fourth leg of the European 